Good afternoon and welcome to Living Out Front. This week we are pleased to have Jerry Dixon, actor and artistic director, currently directing songs for a new world at Farmer's Alley Theater right here in Kalamazoo. And Jerry, it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, Thank you. So you're a Kalamazoo native, are you not? I'm actually not a native, but I feel like because I was born in Chicago, I am definitely a Chicago native son. But I feel like um, Kalamazoo is my theater hometown because it's the theater that raised me and sort of caused mm-hmm. me to be what I've become in the theater world. Right. So it's it's my theater hometown. I'm very proud to say that. Right. Yeah. Well, I know you and I have a history that goes back to uh, the Kalamazoo Civic Youth Theater days. So yeah, we, KCYT. We, yeah. So that was a great program. And I remember uh, how talented uh, you were and what a phenomenal force you are on stage. So it's a Thank pleasure you. to get to see you again. Thank and I can't you. wait to see to be here. Can't wait to see songs for a new world. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience at Farmer's Alley and, and the show? You know, um, I, I'm so um, thrilled to be uh, directing at Farmer's uh, Alley Theater because um, the last time I was here, I was a guest with the Kalamazoo Symphony Orchestra and Farmer's Alley, the organization was just forming. So it, it didn't, it, it really wasn't a theater yet. They were starting to do the organizational parts of opening uh-huh. the theater. So I, I never I never got to see a show there or visit the, um, the, the venue. And um, so I'd never seen it. And um, so I went, basically I came to Kalamazoo with kind of eyes wide shut, not knowing what the theater was. Of course they had specs and you know plans that I can look at uh, via a uh, Zoom and all that stuff, but uh, right. it's it's not the same as like being in the living space uh, and breathing breathing the air and looking at the light grid and seeing what's possible. And uh, mm-hmm. and I couldn't be more thrilled to to visit another theater to work with the people I've never worked with before. The entire cast is new to me. Uh, I've never worked with uh, artistic director uh, Jeremy Koch before. Uh, I've never worked with their team. So it, it's just a lot of newness, which I just, I think that kind of keeps us young and alive uh, when we when we collaborate with new people um, and it keeps us on our toes. Yeah, absolutely. And they have a great team over there. They really do. They yeah, really do. so. And it's it's just nice to, you know, I, it's nice to come home and give back and, and, um, and, and reminisce about the things that you were that you've been through in Kalamazoo, but also with the idea of moving forward. So I can, I, mm-hmm. I like to sit around and talk about uh, the KCYT days and the Civic days, and even there was a, a small professional theater in uh, what I used. I think they used to call it the Kalamazoo Center, where the Radisson is. There yes. was a small professional theater there that I made my actually my uh, acting day uh, professional debut at. I did Man of La Mancha there and Godspell. It's really nice to reminisce about those things, but it's also um, it's also in the context, always in the context of what's ahead. Um, right. So we're not dwelling on the past, but like sort of like just it, it, it gives great context to what's ahead. Uh, and sure. so it's been it's been fun just reconvening with those friends and family here in Kalamazoo that you know that you know and love, and that's great. But also uh, uh, the questions of like what's next is is always right there in the front of your mind. Well, we certainly are fortunate to have you have you here in town and directing. So tell me a little about the show. Uh, the show Songs for New World uh, by Jason Robert Brown is technically called a song cycle, which is kind of heady. It's mm-hmm. basically a review or a cabaret with um, its only songs, uh, a string of songs. And the difference between a review and a song cycle it's usually a review has a through line. It's about these people like Smokey Joe's. It's about a neighborhood of people right. who are friends and, and foes sometimes. Or Ain't Misbehaving is about a group of people who are uh, very, very connected in the community. And, you know, they're all for each other. And there's this through line of friendship. But uh, a song cycle is usually at, at, uh, on the outside very disconnected. It's, it's crafted to be disconnected. And it's almost you can think of it like a clock. The first number is at 12, the first uh, song number is at 12. And then Mm -hmm. as you get through each of the songs, you go around the clock. And by the time you get to about 945, you go, oh, 
they are connected. The light bulb goes off on your head. It's like, oh, that's uh -huh. that's amazing. I didn't think these people had anything in common because they're all you know all talking about different stories. But you know, you start to see the connection and see what the author is trying to tell you about humanity and the world. And so, mm -hmm. Songs for a New World is about all those things. It's about culture. It's about humanity. It's about how we're better together. It's about um, it's about the isms. It doesn't back away from the isms, culturalism, mm -hmm. uh, racism, homophobia, transphobia, uh, misogyny, um, uh, e even the sadness of uh, of a fallen uh, family member from from uh, military battle. It, it it sort of takes all the adult things that we wrestle with every day, puts them in a beautiful musical shape, and um, instead of backing away from it, it really embraces those things and then tells us something about ourselves, about how we push through those negative surprises that life throws us, how we mm -hmm. persevere. And in the end, the thing that Jason wants to say is that we persevere individually. Yes, indeed we do. But more than anything, the, the most successful version of perseverance is when we're doing it together. And I think if, if, if we human beings didn't need to know anything right now, it is that, that we, we, we are persevering and the gift is, the real gift is that we're doing it together. Wow, that's a great description. I know some of the music is wonderful. Uh, so I'm excited to see it. Um, yeah, it's, and it's rare that you get a composer like Jason Robert Brown, who's mm -hmm. also a fantastic lyricist. lyricist. I right. mean, his words and storytelling uh, his abilities are just um, really great. He just he just shapes us, um, even when he shapes us in our bad light, when we're misbehaving in the songs. Mm -hmm. There's still something so wonderfully human about that imperfection. Right. Well, I'm I'm interested. You know that uh, it's it doesn't back away from the isms. Doesn't back away from the things that that. Uh, can disrupt our society, but in the end, you know, it, it, it tells, a, tells a story about how we're better off together as a society. Um, you know, there are things that we need to be doing for one another, and otherwise uh, things get worse. And those isms, a lot of them are negative and they need to go away. So um, it's a particularly pertinent piece, I think, for our times and uh, it's exciting to have a fresh a fresh take on it here in Kalamazoo at, you know with uh, you coming back so where have you been have you been in New York mostly or that's a that Amy that is a loaded question where have I been yeah. I've been, been kind of all where over you been? yeah you know <laughs> you, it's it's like uh, yeah so I I live in New York. I live in Manhattan, and um, I live there with my husband. And by the way, it's our anniversary today. Oh, um, congratulations! Uh, we've been together a long time and been around the planet a lot. Um, but uh, what we do do live in Manhattan. But for the last three years, I've been the artistic director at a um, pretty large theater company in the Seattle area called Village Theater. It's a four venue, um, two city uh, organization, and I uh, have been the leader, the artistic leader there for three three plus years. And uh, I'm now um, moving out of that into a independent contractor role to help uh, find my replacement and train my replacement mm -hmm. and um, also find a new executive leader as well and uh, help them along so that the, sh the, the theater can thrive for the next um, some odd years. It's been open for about 46 years and we wow. want to see it open for another 50, 100, whatever that is. And right. so setting that up for success. But um, it was important for me uh, I learned very much that it was important for me to be back um, uh, in my own in my own stomping ground in Manhattan and uh, with my husband and and mm -hmm. and really uh, seeking out uh, theater opportunities on the East Coast um, and Midwest because um, there's a language that we we uh, this is sort of a no nonsense language that Midwesterners and, and East Coasters speak um, that uh, doesn't have. Um, it doesn't, it, it's not in need of filter. And I find, right. that, I, I find that really refreshing. And, and the Seattle culture is very passive aggressive and maybe too many caveats of like, well, I want to tell you this, but before I tell you that, 
it, it, and and I, I would just rather right. somebody just give it to me, <laughs> give it to me straight, right. and just like so I know where you, where you stand on it. So it's really been refreshing to return to that sort of like I'm yeah I mean what I say I say what I mean culture uh, of the Midwest uh, all, all the way to the Eastern Seaboard. It's been so good. It takes so little time to just say what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. You're right about the Midwest, us, us Midwesterners being very direct. Hence, a question like, where have you been? <laughs> yes, oh. that's, I love that. See that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a Seattleite would have gone around and like said, you know, I've been thinking about your path and reading about what you're doing. And I don't know if you want to talk about this, but uh, what have you been up? It's like, come mm -hmm. on. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Thank you for giving me that nice dish of just frankness. I like that. It's lovely. <laughs> well, you are certainly welcome. So it sounds like you've had a fascinating life since you, since you left Kalamazoo, um, you know. And, I really uh, have. Uh, you know, Kalamazoo was a, a springboard. Mm -hmm. But I also, I say proudly that Kalamazoo, the training and experience I got working in the community theater, in the youth theater, in the small professional theater in downtown Kalamazoo, and, and indeed my high school, I went to Kalamazoo Central and I did mm -hmm. shows there, plays and musicals, and was in a choir. And it really, I'm very proud to say that it really prepared me for New York. I didn't have the even, I guess I didn't have the good sense to be nervous. Because I felt right. really prepared to um, to compete on the level of people who are Broadway veterans. I really mm -hmm. was ready, and um, and then the 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 thing that that was surprising, Amy, is that that the theater afforded me uh, the opportunity to see the world. I, mm -hmm. I I've traveled all over the world. I I love traveling. I didn't know I liked traveling until I started traveling, and I really got the bug, mm -hmm. and uh, and couldn't stop doing it for a while. Um, but the 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 gift of meeting cultures and and different people and the way you know different languages and food culture and music culture and political culture, it really opened up my eyes to 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 a lot of different things that I never would have been, had access to had I not been in the theater, in the way that theater can. It's different if you go in mm -hmm. a business job and you go for a few days and do some big business deal. Because theater is, is, a, um, is an art of communication, you are going to each of these places around the world and communicating with those people. And right. so what you get back is, is their form of what they think about the world and what they think about the citizens of the United States, which right. are mostly good, but sometimes you know, like, and then you just have to learn how to listen and learn. And um, so I just, that's one of the, one of the greatest gifts for me uh, through my entire career is, is, is being able to really visit and, and sort of um, attach myself to different cultures while I'm, while I'm in a city or a town or a village or whatever that might be. It's, just, mm -hmm. it's been an amazing journey that way. Mm -hmm. How um, how have you found with all of these varied cultures that you've you've been able to experience? How have you found um, being an out gay man? How have have you had mostly good experiences in that regard? Yeah, you know, I've had mostly good experiences, and and I. You know, sometimes you don't you don't want to complain because you you want to be the patriot because I do love living in the United sure. States. I love America. At the same time, I would say not only as uh, as an out gay man, but as an out gay black man, I right. I found myself um, it it was kind of double edged because it was kind of wonderful and sad at the same time, Amy, because I would find myself in a European country and. And, and, and be embraced in a way that I had never felt in the United States. Mm -hmm. to, to have, to have um, an openness in, in the society that, that wasn't present in the United States. Right. Um, and, even, and, and even dare say, I, I dare say even in a progressive city like New York, mm -hmm. I, there was just an embrace of difference in culture that I, I, I never experienced uh, in the United States. Now, that was early on when I started traveling early on. Things have 
definitely changed. Mm -hmm. they, they have, we have work to do still. Yes. Um, but I, I would say for the most part, I've had really <clears throat> great experiences, but Amy, we're all connected. And I, and for every great experience that I've had, I, I know a friend or a family member who's not had a great experience and who's okay. had, um, who's had um, e even, you know, threat of harm or actual harm being mm -hmm. gay uh, in the United States or trans in the United States. It, it's tough. And, um, and, and while we, 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 again, we do want to love our country, we have a lot of work to do in terms of getting out of the way of, of progress, of getting out of the way mm -hmm. of people wanting to make things better. It's, it's, it's strange that sometimes the loudest voice is the person who really doesn't have a lot of, of, of interaction with gay right, you know, people. And right. for some reason, they want they want to have all the say. So I would just right. say, like our Americans, we need to learn we need to learn the talent and skill of getting out of the way and let things proceed and allow us to 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 move forward with loving each other and supporting each other and giving people access. I often talk about um, yes, it's it's great for people to have um, to 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 get a you know uh, um, access to the arts and sciences and business. But when it comes down to it, gay people and trans people, we have a bottom line too. We also need to work. We also right. need to provide for our families and for ourselves. Right. And so along with like, oh, come and join the party, come and join the, the, the art thing. You need to say, come and join the workforce. Right. Come and join the ladder that gets you to uh, up to where you want to be so that then you can maybe pass down wealth or inheritance or take care of your loved ones in their later years or take care of yourself mm -hmm. in, the, in your later years. So it, it's not just enough to do the feel good <laughs> stuff. We also have to give access and support to the right. bottom line, which is access to, to, to employment and growth. Right. Use that ladder to help pull somebody else up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's so. our, that's, to me, that's a responsibility. For, yes, every, for every win I have in my career or my life, I should be immediately reaching back. And I, and I think it's important for people to know that you do not have to be wealthy, rich, or even have a lot of money to reach back. Reaching back is time, it's mm -hmm. showing up for someone's function, it's, it's, it's uh, support, it's calling someone up and say, hey, I saw you doing that thing, that's amazing, what can I do for you? You don't mm -hmm. have to wait until there's an accomplishment for you in order to reach back for to somebody else. Right, right. I find it interesting that you uh, you talk about experiencing in a in a European country an embrace of of your your race and your your gayness, your blackness and your gayness that you didn't and feel in, in New York that we still have that work to do. But, you know, on from my, my point of reference as an out trans woman, there's nothing more important than being out and, and mm -hmm. being able to take that risk. And, and people will embrace you once they get to know you. And the more people that, that get to know us, um, the more embracing we all get to do. So, I think it's interesting that that you know that culture has evolved in some other places around the world, and we've got some lessons to learn here in the United States. So we really do, but the I think the good news, Amy, is that bravery is contagious, right? And love is contagious, and support is. And so, when you look at uh, gay life or trans life, you. It, 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 it's it's a walking example every day of bravery, and mm -hmm. no matter where you are in society, bravery is just it's very attractive, and it's 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 something that everybody like. I want I want some of that. See how they walk in the world. I want some of that. And like you right. said, it's when they get to know you, they go ah, and and we know it's all about shedding fear, right? Yeah, when you don't know you're fearful, you close off, you fight, you fight back and, right. and, and nobody gets anywhere. But when you, when you crack open and shed that fear, 
I mean, wow, there's, I just think there's nothing we can't do. I mean, it seems a little optimistic. I am an optimist, but um, I just think there's nothing we can't do once we, when we shed that fear. Right. And first shed our own fear um, of being out there and then help someone else shed their fear uh, of those that are maybe unlike them. Mm -hmm. um, so what a wonderful philosophy. So uh, thank you. That's, that's a great message for our constituents that will view this this video. So yeah, and, and Amy, I will I will say that it wasn't it wasn't easy. I I I was not raised in a uh, a home that was uh, I would say uh, accepting of. It wasn't that it was it was looked down upon. But we know as trans and gay people when when things are are going to go well when we come out. <laughs> we, we have a, yes. sort of a spidey sense of like, yes. I don't know about this, right? So, so I will say, because I think it's important to know that it wasn't, it, for my story in particular, it wasn't easy, but it, it became necessary. That there's something in me that just right. could not hide anymore. It was, it was actually making me not unwell. It was making me unwell. And I, and I, right. I, I just couldn't do it any longer. And like you said, we had that responsibility to shed our fear. And what was I afraid of? And um, you're afraid of that rejection, the people who are yeah. are on the planet designed to love you <laughs> in, the, in the family scheme of design, they're designed to love you uh, come hell or high water, just uh, unconditionally. And when that doesn't happen, something inside you might break. And so that's why we have to have other support systems uh, in case our families don't accept us. We have right. to have networks and, and uh, friends and, and the families that we choose. But it wasn't, it wasn't easy. But, um, it, but it, 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 for me, there, there was this wall that I hit that I kept coming to. And, I, and until I broke down that wall, I wasn't going to be myself. And so right. I finally had to risk it. I finally had to risk being unloved and unwelcome. And mm -hmm. when I did it, um, the, the world didn't stop turning, but it was painful for a while. I'm not going to lie. Right. It, was, it was tough. But, um, but eventually, you would think that your family knows you, but eventually my family came to know who I was right. and who I am. And so they, they, once I broke down the wall, they had to like take away the debris and build back up because that's not my job anymore. That's their job. Once, right. uh, once I do the brave act, and um, and and it was a it was a good journey for them, and you know it was it was great. I had lunch with my sister today, and you know just just terrific. Now it's just so natural for her to say, you know, happy anniversary. Right. You know what? What maybe 10, 15 years ago, you know, she might not have said it. Right. And so we progress as we as we get to know as we as we stop fighting and take breaths. You know. Mm -hmm. So well, it's 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 interesting that you know you you talk about hitting that wall where you just can't not be who you really are, your authentic self anymore, and it's um, for those that are close, for those those people that are close to us, it, it may take them a little while to to understand that um, it's still us, just undistorted. You know, I don't have to distort who I am anymore. Um, you know, they 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 see the real the real me. I hear I hear that in your story too. So thank you so much for sharing that. So, I love how you put that, Amy, because it's uh, it's what I got from that is that it's us revealed when we it's, yes. it's our whole selves revealed um, that we've been really hiding not only from ourselves but there's so many good parts of us that we that we hide away uh, when we're when we're closeted um, that that our families can use because right. we like I said we are brave and so there are other parts of us that that once we reveal ourselves our our family and indeed society and the world then gets the very best of our gifts um, that we've we've sort of squandered away because it's 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 hard to be vulnerable um, when you feel like it's, it, it might not be worth it, but once right. you are and you can express that, you go, wow, I have something to give 
um, right. besides my queerness, I have something to give. Right. There's so many exactly. other parts of me. So right. I, I just think that's a really, a, a really great, especially for young people to know that it's not just about your identity. It's about, uh, it's about uh, being able to share your gifts, your right. multitude of gifts, because you're not just the identity. You're something, you're so much more. And um, it, it, it's such a great thing to be able to shed that fear and, and then share your gifts. Right. You're so it's, it's, it's about being your whole self and, and sharing those gifts. And, it, and that's, where, that's where we become brave is, you know, and, and lead others down that same path. So I can't thank you enough for steering the conversation in that direction. I think it was something I needed to hear today. So, thank you. What comes next for you after, after Kalamazoo here? Yeah, Amy, for the first time in three years, I get to say, I don't know. And as a person who now is about to approach 60 uh, in a couple of weeks, I am so good with that. Mm -hmm. I have some things, a couple of things in the works that I'm, you know, that I have on my schedule. But again, shedding that fear of whether I'm going to work or not work or thrive or not thrive. Mm -hmm. All I have to know is I won't have to sell matches on the street corner. I'm right. going to be fine. I'm right. going to be great. And things will come. And it's so great to be able to say, I don't know what's next. But I know something is next. Something is next. Yeah. And probably something good. Oh, yeah. I Yes, I think so. And if it's not, guess what? Husband and I and my family and my friends will persevere together. We'll we'll take whatever life throws us. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to kind of the not knowing phase of my my life right now. Mm -hmm. An interesting place to be in your life. So having just turned sixty one. Oh so, yeah. You know I'm at out front down the zoo right now, but I don't know what's where I'll go from here. So exciting interesting well i can't i cannot tell you enough how uh, how much i've enjoyed this conversation today and i'm looking so forward to seeing songs for a new, for a new world um, at farmer's alley theater and uh maybe you know hopefully connecting with you again in person um if you're still still hanging around when i get to go so that would be wonderful yeah so thank you so much for your time jerry thank you so much for having me it's um it's always a joy to talk about um being better and growing and shedding fear and mm -hmm. supporting others so i really really appreciate having the, the chance to talk with you all right great my guest today has been jerry dixon artistic director and actor directing currently directing songs from a new world at Farmer's Alley Theater right here in Kalamazoo. So I'll be sure to let you to uh, check it out. And Jerry, thank you very much. Thank you, Amy.